Central bankers meeting in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, are grappling with the aftermath of financial crisis face to face. Now, one man who saw the meltdown coming as long ago as 2005, but was unable to prevent it, is the head of the European Central Bank. Chris Valerio is here to tell us about what some people call the profit without power. That's right, Scarlett. You know, we're talking about none other than Jean-Claude Trichet. He was the first to react when the credit crunch broke in August of 2007. He won praise from economists for issuing those emergency loans to banks, you might remember. But he was criticized for initially refusing to follow other central banks and cutting interest rates and starting an asset purchase program. There would all have, always have been times when we could have criticized him for being uh, too timid or too late in terms of his response or the ECB's response to the crisis. But to be honest with you, two years after the event, he's probably got the ECB precisely where it should have been. Uh, and I suppose that his track record in terms of dealing with the crisis uh, will probably go down as uh, partially successful. Now, that track record is really partially built on that consensus building that he mentioned. It's not an easy task considering he's managing what's essentially the world's second largest economy made up of 16 different countries. He's had to battle divisions within his own governing council, Germany's Axel Weber on the one hand opposing the purchase of corporate bonds, and meantime, the governor of the Central Bank of Cyprus was pushing for more monetary stimulus. Now, Trichet, though, has stuck to his mandate. I think Trichet's approach has always been a very conservative one. This is a man who cares more about long-term interest rates and inflation expectations than anything else. He's not a, a monetary policy activist in the way that uh, Mervyn King is or even Ben, ben Bernanke is. Uh, so you have to understand that's the way he looks at things. Uh, inflation is first and foremost. Okay. So certainly a lot of attention here, and we're going to have to see what happens. Now, I mentioned his consensus-building approach to decision-making, and it really takes time. It leaves him open to criticism of not being bold enough. Uh, the second issue, of course, does he have the tools at his disposal to kind of fix the mess? And it's really much more politically sensitive for the ECB to buy government treasury bonds compared to the Federal Reserve and the Bank of England, because whose bonds do you buy, Scarlett? Good question. Thank you so much, Chris Valerio.